Hi, my name is Sif Batch, Principal Automation Engineer. Today we're going to cover Infobox, Disaster Recovery with Ansible, and how to automate the process. The Agenda, Disaster Recovery Challenges, Overview, the Value in Architecture, Use Cases, Demo, Case Study, and Recap. Disaster Recovery Challenges Customers do not have a automated DRP, Disaster Recovery Plan, meaning for your virtualized environment, your network, your cloud, and these are things you should need to look at and why a DRP plan is really, really important for you. Because virtualization, almost everyone's using a, some sort of VMware infrastructure, network, and cloud as well. Why should this matter to you? Uh, this is actually going to be really important for your brand value, your reputation, reliability, and also loss of revenue. If people can't access your infrastructure, guess what? They're going to go elsewhere and purchase. So this is really, really important for customers to have a solid DRP plan. Consequences of not having a DRP. According to IT Intelligence Consulting Report from 2022, one hour of downtime, the average cost is more than $300,000. And that's about 91% of organizations that suffer an outage. Same thing with a large credit union in the report. With over 50 branches, three hour downtime, Half a million members were not served, and a loss of nearly one million in revenue. This is what users expected from us. Simple, reliable, scalable, and secure infrastructure. Whether it be your customers, your partners, or employees, they all want to have your service up and running 24-7. And this is where automation helps you. Let's take a look at the architecture with a high-level overview. So in this architecture, for example, your business is serving www.example.com on-prem. Here's our public cloud where you actually have our grid members sitting out there, on-prem grid master. So you all know this architecture very well. Nice thing is clients hitting it, boom. They can resolve www.example.com. But say there's a disaster recovery at that data center, whether it be a hurricane, a tornado, flood, any kind of natural disaster, or even something as simple as a power, a major power outage in that area. Cybersecurity attacks, ransomware, and other security events. Some other non-related security events are user error, unexpected outages as well. Based on the HA architecture, the grid manager and grid manager candidate can function as a redundancy as well. So you can have this automation from an IO Sansible plugin to maintain concurrency with Ansible to improve DDI user experience in Ansible workflows and automation of virtual machines, VMs, workloads across multiple platforms. The NIOS module collection provides modules and plugins for mapping network IP addresses and DNS records. DTC Global Server Load Balancing, GSLB, ensure critical application and resource availability and uptime. These are things that at your data center you can't recover quickly. But with Infoblox and Ansible, you can leveraging cloud technology. So for example, in this case, we're using AWS as an example, but it could be Azure or Google. Here's where the clients are still trying to reach, www.example.com, but it's down. What we can do is help you spin up a redundant site automatically and then as an EC2 instance, for www.example.com, restore all the files with some automation scripts, and then leveraging Ansible to do all of this. Now with some automation with Infobox and Ansible, you can now rename the host name or the A record for example.com, 
and point it to the new EC2 IP address. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the demo. Now let's take a look at our IPAM data. So as you can see here, our WW a record is 10, 10, 10, 1. Now, in this example, I'm just going to use the same uh, subnet, but in reality, you would use whatever public IP is facing and rename this data to that. So in this case, I'm just going to rename it to 10, 10, 10 12 as an example, so you can see that. And here's what this looks like, and now let's take a look at and run our code. LS, here's our directory with everything. So now we're going to do a AP update a record and I'm going to sh show you the entire script in the PowerPoint as well so you can review that. So this is going to go ahead and run. It's going to log into our system and go ahead and change that record. Let's go ahead here and give it a few. It's gathering the facts, authenticating, it's removing the 10 10 10 1 then it's adding the new IP. So Let's go ahead and take a look, give it a refresh, and we should see that change. So now it's 12. And we added a little note, creative and Ansible. So this could be changed to the actual public IP that we actually, the EC2 instance has. So we can resolve that immediately. So these are a nice way to automatically do it. You can do it for A records, C names, post records, and I'm going to provide you a link to all of those examples. So that was the demo. Let's do a quick recap. So we automated a creation and restoration of VMs using Ansible and Infoblox. But you can also provision, deprovisioning DNS records, whether it be C name, host names, A records, you name it, you can do that. Also, it gives you visibility from an automation and control point of view, authoritative DNS health checks, consistent policy everywhere. DTC on-prem or hybrid or multi-cloud. You can also use it for multi-cloud for AWS, Azure, Google, and Oracle as well. Let's take a look at the code. The first task is going to remove 10.10.10.1 from NIOS and replace it. The second task will then add the new IP address for www.example.com in this case, it's going to be 10.10.10.12 because I'm using a private network. I don't have a public uh, space right now. But this would usually be replaced with your public elastic IP. So this is how you would be able to manipulate that. On the right-hand side, this is where you actually have your authentication. A subfolder called group fars, nios.yaml file, with all your information there and the script that we're running, update a, and a, update a record .yaml. Then down on the bottom right is the NIOS file, where you're actually calling out the NIOS provider, the host, which is your NIOS, the username and password that you're using to authenticate to run this script. Next, we're going to look at a mock-up script of how this would actually look like in production. So here is a sample code of how you would do it from a DR site. So you would actually now run a task to spin up an AC2 instance. Um, you're going to use your VPC, your API key, and assign a public IP address. Then once you get that public IP address, you're going to go ahead and update the EC2 instance to a host group, www.example.com, and with the IP address, and then you'll be able to in this case is an example of install Apache, get the HTTP daemon running, and now you have a web page presented. But with Ansible, you can actually load in the HTTP files that's needed, make the uh, correct database connections, and now your website has been fully restored. With DNS Traffic Controller, Integrated GS, LB, and Infoblox, you can actually speed up the recovery of whether it be a hurricane, tornado, flood, natural disaster, cyber security attack, ransomware, and other security related events. Use error, unexpected outage. You can actually leverage DTC to automatically recover any kind of outage from those examples. 
nice way to do it with DTC is you can actually update an extensible attribute and that would actually automatically move it to a new EC2 pool and enable the new server and automatically resolve your DNS as well. Next steps would be to contact your partner or your account team at infobox directly at info at infobox.com. Also explore our online resources at infobox.com. For additional resources around Ansible, please check out our GitHub repo at ansible-infobox. And you can also start a free trial today. I want to thank you for watching this video.